Hello, everybody. It is Friday, December 17th. My name is Bobby Pease. This is the Casual Hour, a podcast ostensibly about video games, but mostly about Game of the Year 2021. Joining me, as always, the gamer on the go, Chase Kinnicky. Chase, how are you? Tired, but ready. And the gamer that should have gone, Johnny Amazich. Still here. I'm still here. How are you, Johnny? Not that anybody cares. I'm doing all right. Great. Doing all right. I'm That's off 10, uh, all of next week. Going up. I'm only off half of next week. Oh, you, you yeah. people are getting off okay. of things. Yeah. So yeah, funny story. Sorry, that's. I know retail doesn't do that, but real this jobs is, they let you take time off for a so, holiday. Nice. Uh, this is the first time I've ever taken off that much time around the holidays at, since ever since my working life, and I always thought my wife took off the week of Christmas because usually she was home. But I think that wherever she worked just gave her the, that time off. She always takes off the week after Christmas. And sure. so I put that time in request off. I didn't find out that I screwed up until it was too late. Oh, so you so. screwed up in real life and not just on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. So now I've just got three days that I well, see. I'm sure, work, I'm sure she'll find it. some sort of Pinterest project for you to do. <laughs> no, God, please, no. Working at an advertising agency, what what happens, and this has happened to most of the ones I've worked at, where you know you have you have some break at Christmas, but then it's just like really quiet that week between Christmas and New Year's, mm -hmm. and nobody really says you're off, but nobody says you're There's on. No work being done. Yeah, sure. yeah. It's like you're you're technically like on call, but like you're probably fine. It's it just gets real, real murky there. It's a nice it's a nice murk. Well, hey. Whenever you schmucks forget gifts, I'll be there working. So come buy them from me. I'll see you. <laughs> uh, hey, hey, I put my time in. It's been a fun-filled week here at the Casual Hour. Just to recap a little bit before we, we laughed, get... we cried. Not as much we as we have in the past. Yelled. Yeah. Yeah. I think. I, I, I think, think we have like maybe like one contentious, one super contentious category. Yeah, and I gotta say. We said some very mean things. Still pretty happy with how that turned out. Uh, I I am happy with the list. Still uh, stand by my position, but I, I'm happy with the list. So what we're referring to here is, is uh, this week, Monday night and Wednesday night, we had our category episodes where we broke down uh, a bunch of different things. What's up, Whipped? Hello, welcome. Uh, and we talked about our uh, categories for those. Those are posted over on all of our social networking, which you can follow at the casual hour if you want to get caught up or go back here on twitch and watch one of our vods or video on demands or whatever they call those things or our youtube channel but tonight the way that we do our, our top 10 is nothing crazy we're going to each go through our personal list and uh chase correct me if i'm wrong here there's not really any rule for our our personal top 10 but for the the cat the, the, the casual hours top 10 it is games that were fully released, not early access, in the year 2021. Correct. Yeah. Like, this is our 2021 game of the year. We want to give them to games that actually came out this year. We, we've talked about early access before. We did have an early access category this year, and yep. we've talked about games there. I, I think I'm open if, if we say there are early access games that we want to talk about as games that we really enjoyed in 2021, but I still like, let's keep them to games that debuted in some form in 2021. Yeah. I like, like Mo monster train. I will say cannot be our game of the year. I love monster train. Don't right. get me wrong. This is the first year I played it. It came out on switch. It had a release in 2021, but that is not a 2021 game. It's a game no. from 2020. And, yeah. and, and in years past, you know, like this is one of the, this is the first full year of, members having PCs here on the show. But in the past, we were only on console. And so we had to yeah. wait for games like Monster. So Monster Chain, this year would have been the first year that any of us could have played it. So for in Chase's defense, on his personal list, this is the first time he could play that game. Now, whether he puts it on his list or not, I don't know. But for the casual yeah. hour, we would not allow it. So let's say that that was Chase's number one game and it carried the most weight on his list. It would not carry that same weight on a scoring mechanism for us. Colin, hello. I hope you're doing well. And I hope that those peanut butter and honey sandwiches are treating you well tonight. Uh, anything well, and another thing, like the way you talked about having the most weight, we, I, I want to be clear. 
we I know, I know you do this every time when I try to say this, but what we're going to do just to see the math, I don't think it has to be definitive, but we're going to count these up how we do it. So 10, if your 10th place game gets one point, ninth place gets two and so on and so on. So your first place game gets 10 points Uh, just to see the math, just to see how it works out. What would be our game of the year based solely on that math? I think I always I've always said my position has always been that if we want to tip the scales one way or another, because if if we all put some game as our number seven, we don't feel super strongly about it. It's just our number seven. But we have wildly different top fives, which Ace, means the I, rules I'm, are the rules. No, but they're not the rules. The, those were there to break ties if there was people you, unpa- no, uh, passionate about no, two different things. No. What happened? Monster Hunter World won yes, Game of the is, Year this 2018. Only, this is when this happened. <laughs> This is when this and there's a new Monster Hunter game yes, this year. We should we should so make Chase sure is living I, in fear. My point is that we should fix this when shitty games like Monster Hunter World come out, and we need to make sure that they don't well, win. Hey, maybe and, maybe and the yet they did. are in favor of you. You've you've been. Quite it could the- be. It could be. I'm I'm just saying. I like to see the math first, sure. and if we absolutely want to make a change to that, I think we can have that conversation. Okay. It doesn't you need what, to Chase, be so cut. And I high. appreciate. Your willingness to be flexible on things. Thank you. For- Who knows? Maybe my number one game might be our number one, and you guys go. You know what? It's not though. And then I would be willing to have that conversation. Well, let's get into it and see what what it. the yeah. dice roll has tonight. Uh, Chase, would you please be so kind to kick us off this year with your number ten game of the year? I I would. I'm going I'm going to break a bit of a rule here in that I want to I want to tell you I want to tell you I have I have some things that I want to quickly say are honorable mentions that aren't going to make this God list damn it, because Chase. I didn't you can't get to do this. I I know I'm sorry. No no, I'm just it'll be go really quick. You've I just done something every night this week against the grain. What can I say? That's what I that's what I do. Uh, wow. Four to five would have totally made my list if I'd played it. It's not it's not there because I didn't play it. I'm sorry. I know you guys really like that game. I support. I support your love of that game. I can't wait to play it. I can't. I can't in good conscience put it on my list. Uh, a leckhead is same boat. Uh, games like Fantasia and the game Start that the was music. my play him off. <laughs> uh, a leckhead. Uh, I said a leckhead. Dark deity. Uh, we never talked about it all this year, but I probably would have really liked that Fire Emblem like game. And then the mo- two most important ones in my view. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, a game that I'm playing right now, but I haven't played enough of to really say whether that deserves to be on a list or not. I'm not going to count it. And the one that hurts me the most, Super Robot Wars 30, is not going to be on my top 10 list. Boys, Man. we did it. We fucking packed it I, in. I know, we did it. I know. Holy we shit, we did I, it. I, I've only played four hours of that game. I like it, but I'm waiting for some of this other DLC. It's supposed to come out any day now. So I, 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 I'm just, I just don't feel like it can be on my list. On okay, list. all right. All right. You're beating around the bush. What's your, all right. your number 10? My number, my number 10 is Mario Golf Super Rush, which I know we have issues with. We've, we've hey, talked about list. our issues with. It is my list, but I want to explain it. I, I know that it's a game that we've all had problems with, myself included. The, the story in that game, bad. Uh, uh, the RPG elements in that game, not so good. But... I think that game has fantastic mechanics in the actual golfing. Sure. The, the speed golf, maybe not so much, but the the actual regular ass golf, I've had a f- ton Pretty of good. fun playing that. Yeah. I like the, the character selections. I like the courses. I think all of that stuff is pretty nails. And it it just, if it was good, then if it had a good story to it, if it had a good thing, Colin's asking, how can a golf game have a good story, or have a story? And I would point you to Mario Golf on the Game Boy Color. I think that game is great. I would point you to Golf Story, which oh, literally is it, it literally it's, is the mix of golf and story, and yeah. it's quite good. Um, so like good, man. it's it's possible, it's possible. But this Mario Golf game doesn't have that. Have the what it does have is rock solid mechanics, and for that, it's my it's my number ten. Okay. Also, like it's a game that we got to play on a couple streams this year. And yes, I got to clown on Bobby a little bit, and that was kind of fun. But more importantly, having that online play, being able to play that online and stream it with, with great chat clips. was 
a lot of fun. It's fantastic clips. Yeah. Like watching Waluigi slam that ball with his super hit into the I, rock wall. <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> there, I'll look, I'll nailed say it. this much. I I think that that was a very important game for our show this year. To to back up you on that, like that was a, a chance for us to get together and hang out. And um, you know, I look at it like playing cards. Sometimes you take home the pot. Sometimes the pot takes you. And it was one of those things where we were sitting around hanging out playing. I think that people that come by our show now, we picked up playing that game. And that's, again, the only reason we're playing shit online is to build our community of people and hang out with friends on online and see each other and spend time with each other when it's not been easy because of outside forces doing that. So it's really cool yeah. to have a game like Mario Golf that made it really easy to have an excuse to hang out with each other. And I can totally understand why it would be on your list. Totally get it. And, and if it had a good story, it'd probably be number three or four. I, the story, but it the, doesn't, that, so it's number me, 10. Man, the story wouldn't have went and jumped the shark as much as it did. I probably would have been, it would have made my list. Yeah. All right, Chase. All right, Bobby. Uh, my number 10, boys, is Forza Horizon 5. And, mm. um, you know. I thought I, it would be higher. I, I, I'll tell you what. I, I told my cousin this when I sent him my list today. I said, you could shuffle that list probably any particular way, and I would be okay with how the cards fell. But at the end of the day, um, Forza, I didn't play Forza Horizon 4. Um, I played a, a decent amount of 5, and I really liked it. Race, the racing genre is not my favorite, but this is the best one I've played. And I wanted to, to give it some respect. And, it, and the number 10 spot on my list this year is one of the biggest 10s I've had in a very long time. and. Uh, so I, I think that this is a fantastic video game enough. Yes, it is. Yep. I'm sure we'll hear more about it later on. All right. Uh, mine is the second best Monster Hunter game to come out this year. It's Monster Hunter Stories 2. Okay. False statement, but okay. Whatever you want to say. It's a very good game. What do you want to say about it? Do you have anything uh, to say? I wish I liked it more than I did, but... I still. Well, I mean, if you I would play past the first it. village, you probably would like it. But <laughs> like twenty hours in that game, man. I don't know. It just it didn't speak to me the same way it spoke to you guys. I know it's a unfortunately RPG, an action RPG. You have a hard time Dang. with those. All right, we ready for my number nine then? Number nine. Right. Uh, this is also going to sound like cheating. I. It's the thing is, I just really don't care. It's it's Eastward or Everhood. It's like pick a pick a game, pick an indie no, game that starts with one. E. You can't do that. I can't do that. I don't care. I literally don't care. They're the same thing. I have the well, same thing to say wh about which them. Which one is it then? Eastward They're, is the one I wrote first. Okay. Fine. I don't care. It's fine. Uh, I, both games are gorgeous. Gorgeous looking. Sound amazing. I just don't like the way they play. Everhood I put more time into. Everhood I right. beat. Maybe I didn't beat it. Or I beat it, I didn't beat the optional shit. Uh, Eastward, I, I didn't get all the way through. But I, I didn't really love either, like, the way either of those games played. But the way they looked, the way they made me feel uh, in different ways, they, they made me feel very different things, but in similar ways that they made me feel stuff, but I didn't have a good time playing them. But I, I, I like them a lot. I want to credit them. Uh, just yeah yeah no uh, i think that's eastward and everhood you're, you're both pretty good i just i wish i liked you both more it's fair all right uh my number nine is monster hunter stories 2 a fantastic game i wow. spent a lot of time with enjoyed immensely and uh i got all the way up to the end i still need to finish that one i i plan on going back and doing so and getting some of that in game content going but the end is just the beginning bobby i know well, <laughs> i i i am Planning on getting to it, you know, this year there's not a lot of stuff coming out. So uh, in 2022, there isn't a lot of stuff coming out. So I'm sure yeah, we'll have plenty of time to play. Pretty, oh, yeah, certainly. pretty light. Uh, but yeah. I mean, it, it, right after you finish Tokyo Marauder Session Sharp FE, you'll, yeah. you'll get right back. Yeah, Ampersand yeah. 4. Totally. Ampersand 4. Yeah. Ampersand, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, my number nine is a little game called Rune King. Yeah, that's uh, I really, really enjoy this game. I've talked a lot about it a lot on the podcast the last few weeks. Um, but I am just amazed that a game featuring League of Legends characters could no kidding. grab me the way it did. And um, like it, it's the most fun I've had with the combat 
and an RPG in uh, a good a good while. I really like the way that they implemented the lanes uh, and all that stuff. And it's um, Chase. I think you would love this game because really there's probably, too. probably would. There's a level of tactics involved in the combat, and the characters are well written, well voice acted. The art is absolutely incredible in it, and the team uh, really cool too. Yeah, it's got some really all the the way the way you can restock it, all your your yep. runes and and things, so that you, if you feel like I don't like how this is going, it's not like it is in some RPGs where you just you fucked up. Sorry, um, you can retool it however you want, and also, uh, I think it's very good. Uh, it just hit GeForce now. So I can play it there also. Oh, cool! So I'm gonna put a little. Yeah, also it, with that. it's thirty bucks. Yep. So it's pretty inexpensive. So yeah, I, if and when it goes on sale, like thir- I know thirty is not a terrible price, but uh, I can probably wait for a sale on that one. But I, I think mm-hmm. I probably will end up picking this one. It'd be cool on your Steam Deck whenever you get that too. Sure. sure. Yeah, it also looks real nice on the OLED Switch. Hmm. Um, on our way to eight. All right, I'm I'm done. I'm done breaking rules. All right. Let you know. yeah uh no my number eight is nuts really it, it's not it's the game is nuts like it's it's not a nuts pick it's a it's a pick for the game nuts yeah i i had a great time with nuts it's a it's a short game it's a short uh fun experience i, I like the mechanics i like the way that you are setting up cameras you're not directly interacting with the squirrels that you're trying to photograph you you kind of have to it's a little bit of trial and error, but I found that trial of, trial and error to be really interesting. Uh, the way that you're trying to capture these different squirrels and, and the way that you're trying to um, track where they are. You only, you only get to see them, like a clip of them each night as whatever comes through your camera lens. So you're having to think, okay, I, I'm supposed to find two squirrels. One of them s- definitely starts here, and I just kind of have to keep put, placing my camera little by little to see where this thing is actually going or you just take some wild guesses and just put it down somewhere and and hope that you find it um and i i just found it to be a really fun little mechanic yep. and also the way that game looks is God, is stunning so, so cool. i like the the silhouettes with the the crazy color schemes yeah and and i think that game has a has a nice ending too it, it's not super story heavy like Bobby mentioned, uh, on, I think on Wednesday or Monday, I can't remember, one of our category things, uh, you know, I probably wanted a little bit more Firewatch out of it, yeah. and it doesn't yeah. quite reach that. But even as a Firewatch light, I think it's got a lot to offer, and I think it does some cool stuff. So my number That's eight awesome. is nuts. My number eight is Chorus. Um, that game came out and really... It's it's gripped me since I played it the first time, and I can't stop playing it. I think about it a lot when I'm not playing it. The story is probably the weakest part of that game, but I think when it comes to game feel, flying that ship expert. is just very sound. God, it's so yeah. good. I mean, it runs at a solid 4K 60, which is also really impressive. Um, knowing that the studio hasn't done a ton of stuff before this that's on that that scale, but the the big part of me that really would want Everspace 2 to be out, this has filled that gap for me on being a, a full release. And um, I like a ton of what this game is doing. And I can't wait. I think I'm pretty close to beating it too, actually. So um, Chorus is awesome. It's also a pretty inexpensive game. I think that that one's 30 bucks, 40 bucks, somewhere Sounds in that, about right. that price point also. And it's on a lot of different platforms also. So you should check that one out. Uh, my number eight is Returnal. Huh. Um, I didn't think it was gonna make your list. I don't know why it's. Oh, there we go. Yeah, you know, it originally was not, and then when we talked about it earlier this week, I went back and I played some more of it, and that game has a cool sci-fi setting. Yep. Solid level design. Really solid combat, great feeling movement, and I like the map. Yeah, yeah. Good map. Yep, the Sorry, map is is you know excellent. What that story like? Can you spoil anything for me? Like, what the fuck's going on in that game? I don't know because I've only made it to the third, <laughs> the third world. Oh, um, I thought you said that some dude beat it that you knew. I didn't know if he spoiled it for you. 
No, I didn't want him to spoil it for me, so I didn't ask. I'm so um, curious to know what's going on there. Me too. Yeah, I would I would like to get a full run. It's just when I went back to it, I am extremely rusty. Um so I have to build build back up. Yeah. But I would I would like to complete that game now that you can actually have a save point uh in the middle of a run. But yeah, I just the more I thought about it, the more I realized how much I really, really love that game when it came out. Oh yeah. Um so nice. That's my number eight. Uh, Chase, on to you, my friend. What is number seven? Lucky number oh, seven. On to me. Number seven is Loop Hero. All right. This game that kind of like came, came out of nowhere. Bobby, this is one of the times that Bobby... I think this might have been like the first game, at least the first game of 2021, that Bobby was like, hey, hey Chase, um, I know you don't really like them PC games or whatever, but this is one you might want to check out. And, and it was on Mac, so I was able to play it. And... Damn, I really, really enjoyed Dude, some Loop Hero. That fucking screenshot. Am I doing this right? <laughs> I'm surprised that yeah. wasn't included in the screenshots that you sent over. Um, I did. I it's probably lost the time. I I don't know where that screenshot damn, is. I, man, that probably would have been good. That I was like, oh, we got him. We fucking got him, boys. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was it's awesome. a it's a it's a interesting mechanic. I, I like I like the way it innovates in that space and and does something cool with roguelikes it does something cool with tower defense in a way like a reverse tower defense it's a really cool game it's a a great idea yeah Yeah, same here and and that's i think why it didn't get higher i didn't love the village building stuff i realized that it's important to get more stuff that you need to make the runs better i just that that i i don't know if it wasn't tutorialized well enough or i just didn't understand what it was telling me but I, I didn't know where I was supposed to place things in my town. I, I understood building up like a tech tree to get the new things. I just didn't know where to place them. And that, that, that part just felt real opaque to me. But getting in there and actually doing the loop part was, was a lot of fun. That game has killer music. And I had a, I had a pretty good time with it. The, the, thing I, the other thing I didn't like is it does the thing that I really... Don't care for in roguelikey games, which is you play it straight the the first time, and once you beat yeah. it playing straight, then it says, "Okay, well now play it where you hamper yourself a bunch." Like, right. what if you You're played it, good. but but yeah, yeah, like what if, what if we just cut you down at the knees and now force you to play it? And it's like, well, I I wish you would instead of doing that, give me more things to deal with. Uh, maybe stronger enemies that I have to play in different ways, but you know something like Dicey Dungeons, I, I think of did this too, where it was, hey, you beat the game and you had a lot of fun doing it because we made fun mechanics. We didn't have any more fun mechanics, so we're just gonna tell you to go fuck yourself, and and now we're going to now we're going to just make this way harder for you to play, and and that's not fun. I think there are better, more interesting ways yeah. of adding difficulty to a game than that, but. Loop Hero still. Are you gonna pick it up uh, on the, Switch? No, I don't think so. It's it's just too it's too workable on on my Mac. I, I don't know how that would translate, and I've got enough time put into my my Mac version. And it's like I, if I want to play Loop Hero, I'll just play Loop Hero well, the quote unquote correct way. Too. You'll play it there. That's yeah. also that's also true. Uh, but if if Switch is your only option, I would still encourage yeah, people to yeah, check it out. Sure. Like it's, it's, Ten it's, bucks, right? Something like that. It's very it's very inexpensive. Yeah. Uh, okay, Bobby. My number seven is Metroid Dread. I loved my time with Metroid Dread, and it was my first complete Metroid run. I I it's, I don't mind a challenge. I don't like anything that's punitive, and I know that. Uh, there's some things in, in Metroid Dread that can seem that way, um, but I it's it was weird for me to go back and play a Metroid game when I've played other Metroidvania games. Be like, oh, okay, shit, this is where they got that from, and it was really impressive to see like how polished one of these games can be. Yeah, and I think that this is like just a it it looks really good on the Switch. Um, it runs yes, incredibly yeah. well there. The controls, I think, they 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 get about every element out of you on those controls that they can to make this game feel unique with all the upgrades you get with Samus. But 
it was it was just this really weird slice of the year for me where it, it consumed my my waking moments and i i felt so compelled to like I, this mission that samus was on felt so personal like all right we're gonna fucking get through this we're gonna do it i'm here with you we're gonna see it through the music the setting the like this the darkness but like not being yeah. quite like an alien game but like borderline kind of creepy like alien it's yeah that was that's one of the things that I like most about Metroid is it does explore some darker themes. Yeah. Um, I just, I'm not, I just don't, I wish I liked Metroid games more. Uh, cause I, yeah, I, I feel I, the same way. Like it would open me up to a lot of really cool games. If only I liked that genre in the, I least. can, I, I can stick with him for a few hours and then it's just, I don't know. Like I just, there's a weird I lose correlation interest. between a Metroidvania. And this is, this might come across as a stretch to you too, but it's not between a Metroidvania. And then some of these, so like these crafting games that I'm really into, like the way that you progress. Well, Cause you're returning back to the right. like, same places over and over again. Yeah. Like there's a weird yeah. thing that like my brain does between a Metroidvania and a game, you know, like satisfactory, where it's like, okay, you're going to, you've done this part, you've progressed, you've unlocked this element that you can start to, to hone in and do that. And now that will expand and allow you to do more things with your, your setup. And my brain just goes to the same weird spot when I play games like a, a Metroidvania, when I play a game like that. So I think that that's why I, I enjoy them the way that I do. And this was a really fantastic one. Yeah. All right. My number seven. Uh, is a game that I don't remember the last time I was so disappointed that Bobby didn't like a game because I thought we'd have a lot of fun playing this together. And he didn't even get past the tutorial. <laughs> and that is Chivalry 2. Because yeah. I got to tell you, I got to tell you, when I'm swinging my Warhammer and it connects with the you, back you of someone's talk about skull, what you and your wife do on the it show. feels We're not that type fucking of great. This <laughs> game is so dumb. And so if I killed a man with a chicken. Somebody going to die for a I chicken? Threw it, I threw it. He, someone did. <laughs> um, it's so silly. And it, I, don't, I completely disagree. I think when those weapons hit and you feel it in the controller, it just has a connection. You feel those bones breaking. Uh, it's, it's so much fun. It's so dumb. And I put... I, I can't game, remember... Man. I can't remember the, the hour count, but I, I put a pretty big chunk of time into this this year. Um, just right. hump, hopping in after work, playing around. Man, love that game. All right. We're getting there. Almost halfway. Chase, game six. What do you got for us? I got something pretty good for you. Uh, sorry, I was replying to Colin. Uh, I think he had a good point about how do we treat... The way he was talking about a DLC, and instead of DLC, I, I'd say something more maybe like a an episodic game, Sonic. like Life is Strange. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That if like if if Life is Strange comes out, like Life is Strange True Colors or whatever, I don't. I don't is that yeah. one episodic or do they put the full thing out? I can't. I remember. think the whole thing was yeah, out. Yeah. The whole thing's out now. But but at least in the past, when they've done chapters for things, uh, would we go based on or, what the uh, first chapter is I'll or what the last chapter is or if sure. they do like a full version of the game at some point that that one's a good question and and so far it hasn't really come up but if it did i think it's worth discussion anyway my number six is solar ash a game that i i still haven't completed uh a game that i yeah. i don't feel i've put a ton of time into but one that's left such a good impression on me yeah. where whereas i think all the other games i've mentioned i i would have i've had caveats on how i feel about them like oh i love the mechanics in mario golf i just don't really like the story or uh, you know, Loop Hero, I, I love the loop part. I don't like the town part. Solar Ash, I feel like I can say, this is just a really fucking good game. It's it's yeah. so much fun to move around in that. The, uh, the, the puzzle stuff is pretty fun. Some of the boss fights can be a little bit frustrating, but when you get, get them, when you do the thing correctly, it's so satisfying. It makes that effort kind of worth it. I, I'm just having a great time with it. And, and it makes me feel really good because I... I kind of bounced off of Hyperlight Drifter, Heart Machine's previous right. work, and and I thought that game was rad. I, I think I kick, I did kickstart that game, and I was like, man, I I was really interested in Hyperlight Drifter, and then it came out, and I didn't really connect with it. So for me to connect to Solar Ash like I have, 
has uh, has been a pretty cool experience, and I'm looking forward to playing more of that game in 2022. Feels good, man. That's awesome. Feels quite good. All right. Uh, my number six was a little ditty called Clap Hands uh, Jack Golf. Jack and Diane? Uh, <laughs> Clap Hands Golf. Uh, I will say I have not had that much fun with a golf game since probably Tiger Woods 2002 to 2004 oh, wow. era. Um, it's one of the best, praise. it's one of the best golf games I've ever played. End of sentence. Um, and it's on a fucking iPhone or yeah. an iPad and it works out so well for being a, a, a mobile golf game. Like I was pretty pissed that it wasn't on other things cause I was like, this is a really cool game. But the more I've played it on my phone, the more I've appreciated having this with me. And I think they've done a great job. It is just a, a fantastic, the, the, the whole team golf element, I think works really well. When I was like, when I first played, I'm like, wait, I can't make a golfer. This is stupid. But then when I had a team, I'm yeah. like, wow, I got it. And you met Don Pappas. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, this is who I would have made. I don, Don, pa Don Pappas is absolutely not a character I would have made, but having him on the team. Oh, okay. I've got a team where I can make, yeah. I can have like a couple of weirdos that I really love. Yeah. Uh, and then a couple people who are like more my, my character. Yep. Um, I, man, I I had some pretty... I, I really enjoyed a lot of my time with that game. And then I had some problems with the way it was playing on my phone. It was not registering some finger movements. And it really broke bad where I was. it felt like every fourth shot I was Damn. just absolutely shanking. And not in a way of yeah. like, oh, you weren't doing the mechanics right. It just it wasn't registering... I, when I was moving, I, I know I know you're out. not going to, but I would just say I've been following the updates. So they've been updating that game quite a bit, um, yeah. And some of the stuff that they've been talking about has been controls on some of these updates. So maybe it's worth down the line checking out again, sure. um, or or maybe when I get this mythical iPad that I'm going to play Fantasia on or steal your iPad, yeah. um, I'll, I'll play I'll play a little bit more clap hands while I'm while I'm on there. Yeah, there you go. Very good game. But yeah. It, Don Pops alone like puts it at a five. Yeah, that's that's it's very, it's a, very good. Or a six, rather. Six rather. All right. My number six. Uh, a little game called Death Loop. All right. Price is not higher, honestly. And I don't have much to say beyond the things I've already said on this uh, show about it, but it's a really, really fun, cool video game. You should check it out. All right, we made That's it good. halfway. There's no more. Yeah. This is where the, the rubber meets the road. Is that what they say? Sure. We're going to get the like rubber on the road. Going to make him gonna burn dust. Eat my rubber. What do you got for us? Uh, my, num my number five is the best Monster Hunter game to come out this year. It's called Monster Hunter Stories 2. It's, uh, it's a real good game, despite what Johnny I, says. I thought that would be uh, I didn't say it was uh, a bad game. I just said it wasn't kind of the did. best Monster Hunter game that came out this year, which kind is a true that. fact. Uh, Monster Hunter Stories 2, it, it kind of, it, it picks up, the story doesn't pick up where Monster Hunter Stories 1 left off, but the mechanics, I feel, do. It, it was like, just feeling, it was, it was taking a dive into a pool of, of nice, warm, comfortable water. It's like, oh, this is the only type nice. of water like I want to be in. Taking a taking a nice bath. Uh, I, yeah. I felt I felt comfortable. I I felt safe. It was sure. it was fun to go through. You know that that game is a little fiddly. I'll admit, but it's my kind of fiddly. Yeah. And I I liked the way they freed things up. The the flying mechanics are much more open in this game than they were in the first game. I mean, the first game was on 3ds and and then and iOS at some point. And I can't I can't imagine how the iOS played. But uh, it it feels pretty darn good on a switch. It doesn't. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a switch, so it's not going to run amazingly. But it runs pretty darn well, and this never, kind of the game doesn't need to be never, running yeah. at four K sixty. I never really cool. had any technical issues with it. It got a little choppy in places, but for the most part, I think I thought it ran pretty well. And I I, I did play some of it on that OLED switch, and it looks sure. very nice. Oh yeah, nice. That's good to hear. It, it's just uh, it's it's a game. I, I don't like Monster Hunter games. I, I think that's pretty obvious from the way I talk. But uh, the Monster Hunter Stories franchise, the way they've turned that into a pretty traditional JRPG, yeah. the way they've that combat like, is good. The combat is cool. The combat is like, hey, it's Pokemon, but 
what if you were also fighting alongside your Pokemon right. and it the uh, you know how like people love Pokemon two on two battles because they feel more strategic. That's basically what this game is. It's like what if everything was a double battle? It's it's Temtem kind of, yeah, and, uh, and it's 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 cool that you can find different ways of affecting the the battle by switching out different monsters in battle or, or using different types of attacks and trying to customize your monsters in different ways. It's a uh, it's a cool thing. It's it didn't hit me as hard as the first game did because the first game was such a new thing to me, but it was still you know that that comfort that warm blanket that nice bath and yeah and that's really what i was looking for and and got with monster Hunter stories too awesome uh my number five is unpacking and uh i i'm suspecting we might talk more about it later on but for me Oops. um that game it this provoked a lot of feeling that I, I i should have anticipated from it but i think I haven't played a game that was so good at tapping into sentiment and nostalgia without saying much at all. And it really made me think about growing up. It made me think about where I'm at right now. It made me think about like how I was as a roommate, how I am as a partner. It made me think about like the house my parents had for me growing up and like the things that they gave me that like meant a lot to me that in informed my decisions on like what you maybe see around me right now this office that I have and like the reason I have certain things in this office, like why are they in here? Like what role do they play being in this room? Like why are they of importance? Do you have a cool background when you're on stream? Well, that's one of them, but I mean, if you, if you had to move tomorrow, how much of this stuff would you actually take with you versus how much would you leave or throw away even? Yeah. Yeah. And like this happened when, when, when my wife and I moved in together, you know, like there's boxes of things that like are in basements and closets that, we can't get rid of because they mean too much to us, but we don't want them out, but they have to (laughs) be there. You know, it's a weird thing that we do as humans. Yeah. We, we get attached to things from the past and you know, it fuels nostalgia and um, you know, we, we keep, we, we, I keep all my birthday cards that my, my mom and dad give me, um, you know, cause it would be nice one day to be able to look back on that and see, what my mom and dad had to say when I turned 25, you know, so. And I think about, you know, that game took place, like, for me, so, like, not to age myself too much here, but a lot of the events that were happening in that game, those life moments were very similar time frames for me. And so, like, a lot of the things that were, like, from a technology standpoint, I thought was really cool because, like, those were things that I had and were enjoying at those periods in my life, and that was awesome. And so... It made me think about people that I enjoyed those things with that I don't talk to anymore. And like that really bummed me out. And it made me think about you know, like, like, I'm still talking to this fucker, Johnny. I just can't well, shake yeah. him. Uh, you know, like it made me think Don't about make- all these cool people are no longer in my life. <laughs> I got to deal with this fucking asshole two times a week. Right. You know, right. I get it. I used to if be a piece more. of shit. <laughs> uh, you know, slick back hair, all the, but anyway, unpacking, I think, a, a, a beautiful game that does a really good job at saying a lot of great things without saying anything at all. You say it best when you say nothing at all. I think that was a song. Uh, it was. So anyway, that was Alison Krauss. Wow. Uh, okay. And uh, Union Station. <laughs> okay. Big John, my dad, big fan. I heard that song a lot when I was growing up. <laughs> uh, Johnny, what was your number five? Ah, uh, boys. Oh. Little game called Hitman Three. Mm. All right, a per- almost perfect end cap to an incredible trilogy. Um, other than an exciting at the time, but overall underwhelming final level. Uh, just because it's it's not okay. I don't want to call it bad, but there's all those levels in those games for the vast majority incredible. Just like the the pathing and all the different ways that you can complete your task, and this one, I think that IOI shined as bright as they ever have uh, with any of the other Hitman games I've ever played, and I really really love this game. I had such a good time with it. I keep saying I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back, um, and I probably will. Once they they're going to release some new levels next year, so I will definitely get back to it then. Is that confirmed? They're doing uh, that. 
Mm -hmm. Nice. Yep. Uh, I think because this game did better than they were anticipating, because they, 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 before this game came out, they kind of posited it as like, hey, don't expect any more Hitman for a while after this. And then I think it did really well for them. And they kind of were like, oh, we're, we're never going to be done with Hitman. What are you talking about? Um, so I don't know. Those games are very near and dear to me. Uh, I've enjoyed all three of them immensely. And uh, yeah. Hitman I think that the coolest part to me about about these three Hitman games is the way they continue carrying mm -hmm. the old ones forward. You have and, all those and, missions. And not just carrying them forward, but like you have whatever new mechanics that have yeah. shown up in the in the future games. Yeah. It's it's like they're making rolling remakes. And uh -huh. that's that's kind of yeah. awesome. And they get the they, they get the elusive use. targets. They always like right now you can kill mm -hmm. Harry and Marv. They do that every year, I think. I love like, those guys. Yeah. Um and Will, they they'll, they'll usually that? have from Home Alone. Damn. Yeah. Wow. Got it. Uh and yeah, they're just they're so good. They're such good games. I'm so excited to see what they do with James Bond, because um, it's you know it's going to yeah. be a little silly. How Hitman is silly, and that's it. Just it has this perfect balance of taking itself incredibly seriously, but also knowing how ridiculous and over the top it is, like the the curving briefcase. Uh, so I kind of anyway. hope it's not a Hitman game, though. I hope I hope they don't just do Hitman oh, and then put James Bond over sure. the top of it. I hope it's like a right. pretty different experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, with that, with all the knowledge they've gained from that, exactly. We'll see. But that, yeah. that's my hope for it. I'm so excited to see what they they come up with that. So yeah, that's my that's my number five game. Awesome, Chase. Well, you know, I'm that's pretty excited. Cool. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about a little game called Toem. Uh, Toem is my number four. Toem is great. Toem, we've talked uh, about it over the course of this week. It's, it's probably really we good. we saw this on the Wholesome Direct. I think was that the first time we saw it, uh, or maybe like a Steam Summer, whatever the there fuck. A, no, we played it. Remember, we did the quick look for the demo. That was we played, we the, played a demo. The right. Next Fest. Next yeah. Fest. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and we just fell in love. Yep. Uh, I, I know I mentioned this earlier this week, but. I was I was very jazzed for a new Pokemon Snap game to come out, and and it did, and I kind of was whatever on it. It it's fine. It's not it's not making my top ten list. I'll tell you that, but it's fine. Right. Uh, tell them, tell them somehow is what I wanted out of that, but in a smaller, cheaper, more interesting package, and right. and the way they were able to pair uh, a story with exploration with quiet moments with that photography element to it was was really cool and and i think the ending's really cool too yeah it was it was up there for best moment for me best moment or sequence of the year um where you where you climb that mountaintop and you finish that journey and just was pretty affecting to me i i had a really great time with it and gotta play it's, it it's one that's gonna stick with me for for quite a bit yeah i it, it, it's not on my list i'll say that now um yeah it it's one that i adored and uh i think it deserves the praise you're giving it uh it's one of the first like, uh, go, go ahead i just also well you know if you're talking about tome continue i'm gonna kind of yeah okay go um ahead. i was just gonna say like i haven't 100 percent of the game in a long time and that one i did and yeah uh i enjoyed every aspect of it, it was great uh, before you do yours, Bobby, I just want to say I, I think this is also pretty cool. We've we've gone through our ten to five, and I did my number four. And so far, we've only had one game that has gotten picked more than once. Um, and of course, that's Monster Hunter's Choice too, because it's probably the best game of the year. Just want to let you guys know that. But uh, I think that's really cool that we've had such a broad experience of video games this year yeah. and yeah. had so many different ones. Cause I feel like at this point in any other year that we've done this, there have always been a, a handful of games that we've gotten at least doubles on. And I know we're going to get to some places here Triples coming up where them. we're we'll yeah. safe. <laughs> um, so I'm looking forward to seeing what our, what our top fours are, but I, I'm also pretty excited and proud that we have such a varied list of, it's, of stuff here and still and waters run deep my friend i'm not gonna say that <laughs> i don't care in prior years of like anything below my top five 
but it has been in times where it's like my top five has been like okay this is like i gotta really be focused yeah. here and then it's like and the the bottom half is much more fluid but this, yeah this I, year, like sometimes you just want to like call out a game for something cool or interesting they did and and yeah. to some extent i have a couple of those but all also just I think there were a lot of really interesting games this year. Yeah. Maybe not a lot of really good games, but a lot of really interesting games yeah. out there that we've been able to talk about in at different yeah. lengths, and that's that's cool to me. I was Developers making changes up until finding, yeah. 20 minutes before the show tonight on some stuff. Wow. Um, yeah. Really just like going back and forth, trying to think through some things, and like when I say like my top 10 is like there's things that like I have a list beneath my list of things I cut, and I'm looking at that and like that could be a solid ass list itself of of games that like meant a lot yeah, to sure. me. And uh the top ten is important. And for my top four, or my number four, I'm sorry, uh it's it's Loop Hero. And this was a game that Chase mentioned earlier. He he definitely ran into some stuff with it. I am so captivated by this little game and what it does and what it, it what you don't do when playing a game like this. Like, it's almost like, you know, people who play dice, right? Like they roll those dice all the time and there's something compelling about doing it when you have no control over how those dice will fall. You, you, you accept what the dice gives you, you pick them back up and you throw them again. And, and loop hero to me is a lot like a dice roll where I'm hoping that through the, those dice rolls, like I get, the loadout I need and maybe I'll catch something lucky before I make that corner and maybe I run into something stupid that I did by putting like three fours in a row thinking that this would help me and I'm like well shit you didn't get the dice roll that you needed for this better fucking mm. run away and do it I think that the game goes back to a style that has been done a lot but also does it in a way that feels so fresh and so current it, it brings some things that happen in video games right now into an era that we haven't thought about for a long time. And I think that the soundtrack especially is one of the best I've heard in a very long time for a game. Um, it's, it's great. It's, it's one of those games that I think really kicked off a dynamic with Chase and I. I think it's a catalyst for Casual Mondays. I think it's a catalyst for a lot of what we got into this year. And even if Loop Hero isn't my game of the year, Loop Hero opened doors towards my game of the year that I, I have to respect. Loop, Loop Hero walked so other games that we'll could talk fly. about here sooner <laughs> could fly. Mm, yeah. let's, let's not. Let, mm, who knows? Who knows? We'll see. We'll see. Uh, All right. Yeah, that was four. Yep. Number Donnie, what's your four? Four. The best Monster Hunter game that came out this year. Monster Hunter said Monster Hunter Stories too. Uh, I, I put about 40 hours into this game this year and enjoyed every one of them. I only stopped playing it because I realized that the PC version would be coming out and it's going to look and run a lot smoother uh, and better than it does on the Switch. It so I will be a sinking. rough on the Switch. It does. It chugs a little bit. Um, I started maining a hunting horn in this one uh, after using the charge blade for most of Monster Hunter World. So learning a whole new weapon type was really fun, and they they made it a much more accessible weapon. And I tried going back to the charge blade. I made I made a couple of those, and I'm a horn boy now. I've it's just oh, that's who I am. I mean, that, that's what I've always said. <laughs> it's too bad that we don't have titles for this episode because <laughs> yeah, shame. Damn. We've had some good ones already, but that one takes cake. Oh, I let me yeah. I goddamn I love Monster Hunter. It's so good. So Johnny, I uh. I'll jump in here really quick because Monster Hunter Rise is not in my top 10. And, uh, A2, Bobby. <laughs> um, I played, I played the better Monster Hunter this year on the Switch. And, hell yeah. Um, but I'll play the better Monster Hunter in a, like a month on PC where mm -hmm. I did have a pretty difficult time with just how that game performed, knowing, um, how well that game looked and ran when we played it on our, our Series X. And I... Firework show that you're going to see on the PC. Yeah. Uh, no kidding. <laughs> so I, I'm... Or the I plan fucking on, July. <laughs> I plan on playing a lot of it on the PC because I it's it's a lot of... It does 
all the things I loved about Monster Hunter World. And, you know, what Chase talked about with Monster Hunter uh, Stories 2 for him, I felt Rise was doing something that, like, I was so enthralled with Monster Hunter World because it was the first time I did something like that. And I'm happy mm-hmm. to have more of it in Rise. And, and I think that the stuff that they're bringing out next year is going to be even better with the DLC that they're doing. And so I, I fully anticipate next year to be my year for that game. And I know that you and I will play it on PC, and that's going to be fantastic. Um, it's I'm looking at it right here. It's it's on my list, my, my secondary list of, of games. I really, I, I dig it. I, I, not having it here is not saying it's a bad game. It's just saying that it didn't, Get it. it didn't get it the way that uh and monster hunter stories for me this is my first time playing one of those so like it was pretty pretty impressive so i get it yeah yeah all right all right chase? top three chase my number three unpacking uh okay. bobby bobby said pretty much everything i need to say about it i i think it was just a really great experience one that uh i think it was a fun streaming experience for me and bobby where Th- those are some of my favorite streams where we got to get off topic and talk about how our own homes are arranged and our philosophy on how we organize things. What's and that was, that was just fun. Exactly. Uh, I think it was fun to interact with the chat some of those times. Um, it's, it's a game that I jumped into other people's chats and watched them play, Jedi uh, specifically. Mm-hmm. And, and that was a lot of fun watching the way he and his wife uh, played played that game and put their stuff away in different ways. And, and I also got to play that game alone and, and had, a, had a really interesting time going through that game alone and, and making those decisions on my own as well. And I, like Bobby said, it's, it's really, really affecting without saying a word. Yep. And, uh, and that's, that's just really impressive to me. It's, I, I know I brought up on the show, what was it, a couple of years ago, the, the going, or the, packing up this your stuff in the last day or old apartment or something yeah, like yeah. that. Very long name. Um, any combinations of those words, you'll probably find it on itch. But uh, that game I, I had a lot of fun with. And, and I think unpacking has a level of polish that that game didn't quite have. Um, and it just, it makes, it makes that style of game all the better. It's awesome. Good game. All right. My number three game of the year was inscription. And I that this game just kind of came out of nowhere for me. And again, some of these other games that I've played this year, I think really paved the way to, to make me curious about a game that a deck builder that's kind of horror based. I was like, I don't, you know, like a year prior, I'd probably be like, yeah, I don't know. But the zany elements that so of that cool. game and the mousetrap elements of that game that, that unfold and it's, meta that that happens with it the design um that run that chase and i had where we quote unquote beat the game just fucking like all the weird mechanics that come with it and you know i think <clears throat> every time i think about that game I, I think of a word the word clever like that game is incredibly clever at what it, it sets out to do and it is one of those things that like i think years from now people will be looking back to inscription for some of the things that introduced and like people that have been chasing it because this game was made by one dude and it it, it kind of reminds me of like undertale like yeah. the way people responded to that when it came out um in terms of how different it's like it's like undertale for people who aren't weebs yeah there you go maybe that's why Which, I like you it. know i'm i'm a i'm a weeb so i also really enjoyed undertale inscription's quite cool uh, but yeah, Inscription is a rad video game that I don't think I have seen all of yet, but would love to see more of. Okay, cool. Uh, my number three is Fights in Tight Bases. And this top three here, like, I was just, they're like, rotating you know like pies rotate in a, in a case it's kind of like that like they all look delicious i would eat any one of these uh but the other two impacted me uh in different ways so yeah it, i mean I, i'm honestly surprised it's that high on I your too. list because I, I feel like 
I feel like we haven't talked with you that much about it. I feel like you've you've texted us a couple times. You've talked about it on the show, like, oh, this game's cool. But I I guess I, I no, probably man. and I have also played this multiple weeks on stream. And you've been in uh, some of those. You've been in some of the chat on some of those streams. So like yeah. you've been with us. But wow, I'm, I'm impressed. I what taste see. out of Johnny Amazich. I put that. I put twelve hours into it. There was, you know. It, it was one of those games like I got 15 minutes let's start a run and fights and it, it tickles my brain in the same way that Into the Breach did and you know it it's so satisfying and also you just you can get completely dick yourself over yeah uh, you know if, if you don't consider all your moves it's just it's it's a very excellently it's so solid it's such I'm a tightly designed game so um, happy to see this game on your list i didn't think it'd be on your list at all and i didn't think it'd be this high so that's yeah no i did i not express how much i love this game to you guys i mean uh, after I said I it was good yeah, I, but like dude like chase and i've been on this fucking journey with this game yeah and that's just, i just i i don't i usually don't delve into early access games the same way that you do right uh but I knew how important it was to you guys, and I was like, okay, I, this, is, this is the one game, if I buy one game this year that these two won't shut the fuck up about, uh, it's got to be Fights in Tight Spaces. And are you and, that, that, that logic? And watching you guys play, and also, more like, down. the more Chase said, like, oh, Into the Breach, you know, I was like, yeah. okay, all right, well, yeah, I'm going to buy this. And then I knew, before I even played it, just having watched you guys, how much I would enjoy it. And then once I actually got into it, I enjoyed it even more than that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's an excellent game. I'm very, uh, very happy for those guys. They, they have like a overwhelmingly positive review on steam. Um, so good. You know, it's or very positive. Sorry. 94% positive reviews. And that's Pretty darn good. Yeah. They should be patting themselves in the back for making one of the best games that came out this year. And, yeah. and then they should be like working on the switch version. Like, Pat yourself right. on the back and then like and then yeah, get on that like switchboard. <laughs> uh all right, Chase. What's your number two game of the year? My number two game of the year is Inscription, which is weird. I don't I didn't play that game. <laughs> I don't own that game. Bobby does. You, do you want to know something? What's that? I haven't played this game. I've only heard yeah. about it. I almost made it my tenth best game. It's I mean <laughs> it's kind of it, it sounds it, so I believe cool. it. It's really cool. I I feel like I've ragged on it a little bit in in our stream, saying that it's pretty simplistic from a card game standpoint. Sure. And I and I still kind of stand by that, but I also think that is in, in the game's favor, and that it has gotten a bunch of people who don't play these kinds of games because they're too number heavy to actually give this one a shot. And and I think it does some really cool things. One with the card game, but even more important than the card game, it's what happens outside the card game. Yeah, it's what 100%. what happens outside that can come in and affect the card game it's the so cool the, like i don't i don't also don't like scary shit like i'm that's not my bag and this right. game has some you know not disturbing. not necessarily yeah i mean it's not doing a Cabin bunch of jump scares or anything at you but it does have some unsettling moments to it okay and, well, i'm even and more yet, intrigued now i i just was digging it from from start to I mean, not finish. Apparently, there's a lot more of that game that we haven't yeah, experienced, we should, Bobby. We should maybe do that more. We should, but it's also, like, I kind of want to say, like, well, maybe I'll just wait until the Steam Deck comes out and play it there. Hope, there. Hopefully, it gets ported to something that I that I have. Um, but, man, I for a game that I didn't play and still do not own, um, Inscription's really fucking good. Yeah, man. And uh, it's, it's my number two game of the year. That's awesome. Cool. Uh, my number two is Deathloop, and I was blown away start to finish for this game. I I I love every aspect of this game's design. I I think it has some incredibly well done gunplay mixed with abilities and with the slabs. Um, I I I love all the characters, the voice acting for each one of them, the way that they're all hung up on each other works so well. Um. It's, it's got a style to it that I, so when, when Bioshock came out, I was like, so impressed with like the visual style and setting and tone that that game had. And I haven't 
had a game similarly like that is set in a period quite like bioshock hit me until death loop and uh it's it's so damn cool um you feel incredibly powerful but also very vulnerable with the way that the the abilities they give you the tools they give you to solve these puzzles and how they kind of hold your hand a little bit with some of that but then the in, the invading that happens makes you feel like you're at risk of being attacked and 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 having that thrown away i, I really like the currency system in this game and how they let you infuse items that you get to bring along with it so by the time that you do your run you've got this beast of a character i also like how they raise the stakes with what you're up against at the further you get into it um i like that there's so many things happening that you can watch in the world mm -hmm. that it's so it's man, a, it just it's good. it just goes down this this fucking hole i you know, I don't, I didn't like Prey that much because it really scared me. <laughs> it's a really unset, like Prey is really hard. Like it's fucked up and, and a, yeah. it goes, it goes a little bit further past like alien scary into like more um, event horizon scary. Um, yeah. Where I think Dishonored is like one of my favorite games ever. Like I love Dishonored. Dishonored 2 was not as great, but the Death of the Outsider is really fucking solid. But this game feels like, Arcane Studio was going back to their notes and it feels like they were getting a lot smarter about what they want to do in their video games and what works well for them and what they're known for. Um, Deathloop is a fantastic video game and Sir, that surprised the hell out of me this year. Very cool. All right. My number two a little game called Forza Horizon 5 and I wasn't expecting to like this game as much as I did considering I've played every Forza Horizon, um, but oh, it sounds like you like them. Yeah, I do. I love those games. <laughs> um, and this one, I don't know. I think it's just like the cars have always felt great to drive, but I think it is that backdrop of Mexico and how absolutely gorgeous that world is um, and, and fun to explore. And it's just, I love it. It's, it's the best racing game I think I have ever played. I think I've said that every week since I started playing it. I also um, feel like we say that every time a new Forza Horizon comes yep. out. But <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, but I, I mean, it's always true. It's always true. Yep. So the game is excellent. Drifting for if you Jesus, have a man. Piece, I'm drifting for Jesus. All right. Chase. Oh God. I mean, you you know, it's fights and tight spaces. Like it 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 it, it can't be anything else. Um, an, another game that I don't own and technically haven't played. I've, I've played Bobby's copy through Parsec, but I I can't. I don't have a way to play this game. I guess I technically do. I could get on my Xbox One. I'm not gonna do that. But uh, someday, whether it's on a Steam Deck, whether it's on a Switch, or whether it comes to something else, uh, I'm I'm gonna play a lot of fights in tight spaces. Well, in, in Inscription, I was talking about how, yeah, I, I love a lot of stuff it's doing, but mechanically, like, card game-wise, it's a little thin for me. It's a little simple for me. Um, this game is not. This game is, it has all the complexity I'm looking for. It's, it, I just dug it. As yeah. soon as we started playing it and, and picking decks and choosing that stuff, but I think it was that update where we got the draft. Yeah. Where we were able to draft yeah. our own decks and, and start building out stuff, start start really getting an idea of, okay, I want to build into this kind of an idea. That that stuff right. is where it took off for me. And I just had a blast with it. I you know, I also am not a big early access guy. That's just not that's not the kind of stuff I do. And this game probably threw Bobby because he was he was playing it and I was happy to watch and then happy to backseat game and then basically taking over every yeah. every move that he made. Um I, I I was having a great time with all of those updates and now the game is is out. A game when did it come out, Bobby? Last last month or early early December. earlier this month. Late, yeah, early earlier this month. Earlier this yep. month. Yep. Uh, December 8th or something like that. And so it made it under the wire and I didn't have to have a really existential crisis of how I would evaluate <laughs> this game. So thank you to Ground Shatter for for doing that. But yeah, it's 
it's just the best game that came out this year. <laughs> it's that's all I can that's all I can say. Let's, it's let's it's my number one game going, of, of the year. What do you say? Yeah, you think? Uh, let's do it. Fights in tight spaces is my game of the year, and yeah. uh, it's it's not even close. It's not even close. Um, which is weird. Like if you look back at at my list that I've had over years past, like there's not much that looks like this game, but I I think they've made a fantastic video game uh over there at Ground Shatter. And uh it it did a lot of things. So like for me, like this game represents so much um for our show and for us as like friends chase because like it allowed you and I to like I think about like the the Monday Monday nights became something that like I just got so excited for this year because I knew that like you and I would be playing a lot of fights in tight spaces or games adjacent to fights in tight spaces. Um, and I remember like just reaching out to ground shatter and being like, Hey, we really dig what you're doing. We'd love to, to, to talk to you more about it. And like, we've got a friendship there now, which is great. And like, we talked to those dudes and, like that in itself, and, is, and I want to, and I want to be clear. Like, yeah, we we do, we're our, we do have a bit of a relationship right. with those dudes. Uh, one, we liked this game way before we talked to them. It right. was we liked this game enough that we want to reach out and we want to do something more with it. And and two, I I think even if they completely ignored us, even It'd if they told us to one. fuck off, yeah, uh, it would still be my number one easily yeah. that's, because that's this game the, is is just so good. Only reason I brought that up here was just to to make that statement that Chase did, which was. We love everybody over at Ground Shatter and the work that they're doing, but this is by no, like we are three dudes that just really like video games, and yeah, we, this isn't this isn't sponsored content. No, not at all. <laughs> like this is this is like very heartfelt, but, sincere. If yeah. if they want to, like we're here. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. But we that game brought so much fun and excitement. It was pure joy in our chat when we got to play it. Um, I think it is an incredibly smart game. It is one of those games that is just pure addiction when you play it. It captures yep. the best parts of video games and the best parts of cinema too. And it brings them into a really interesting package. Like people say all the time, like video games don't make great movies, but you know what? These movies made really great video games for, for Ground Shatter. And you can see where the, the inspiration came from. This yep. game opened my mind wide up this year. And my, my top 10 list is 100% the way it is because of this game and the games that I played because I played this game where I wouldn't have done that in the past. I really wouldn't have. And I, I'm not saying that like the games I played in the past were bad or the genres that I we, like. We have, like we can go back years past and see here's when Chase said into the breach was the best game maybe ever made. And Bobby's like, eh, I mean, it was okay. Yeah. And, and now we're here and Bobby's going fights in tight spaces. It's the best game of the year. And I'm going justice, justice <laughs> yeah. for chase. Yeah. You're I watching mean... cowboy bebop. You're playing. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Bobby's made a journey this year yeah. to become a cooler person. Yeah. And I think he's doing a great job. Thank you, chase. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> standing in your shadow, but on Donnie, the of you still have a lot of work to do, but you know, Gundam is getting you there. Uh, it is. So anyway, I just want to say like, a, a, you know, thanks to you guys for like playing that game with me and like chase you, especially like I know you never played it, but played it through me and just being a partner there was, was great. And, uh, you know, J James and the crew, like we, we, we love you all. We think you've done something really special here and, uh, this game deserves, like, I'm so happy you guys were able to get this game out. I'm so happy this game hit 1.0. The Discord yep. community has been so awesome over there. Like just the support that they've like the people that are excited about this game and what's going on with it. And the content keeps coming. Like they they just introduced a seasonal thing where like all the agents are are dressed up for Christmas, which I think is really cool. And yeah, who knows? Maybe we'll we'll do something with that and, and quote some Biff Whiff while we're oh. doing it. We'll see. We'll see. Uh all okay. right. We do have a little right, business well. left though. Johnny's got a number one game to talk about. What do you got? Hey, Hi, oh, what could it be? You guys, could it be anything else for me? I didn't think that it would even make my list this year. Not because I didn't think it would come out, but because I thought it would be bad. Um, and that is a little game called Halo Infinite. Um, so I was super on the fence about Halo Infinite. I was going to play it because of how much I love Halo and how much that series means to me uh, and has since... I've been like 13 years old, 
which is weird that I've been playing a game that long um, or franchise that long. But that first network test came out and it was just against bots on the not difficult setting and to get my hands on the controller and to have it feel the way it did when I played it. It it gave me this little spark of hope. It's like, okay, all right, we'll see. We'll see. Let me wait and play against other people. Maybe have a little bit more challenging. And then the second network network test came out, and I did get to play against other people. And I was like, oh, okay, all right. Maybe maybe they found their way. And then uh, it surprise dropped um, about a month early. And I have played it every single day since it came out. Um, I absolutely love the multiplayer. It is the best it's been since Halo Reach. It is the most fun I've had with a shooter since Titanfall 2, which is one of my favorite games this past generation, probably ever, uh, for the campaign and for the multiplayer. And I'm really loving the campaign. The grapple hook has completely changed how the, the grapple hook like just the, has the same it, importance that the Leviathan X did for God of War. I'll say that. Yeah. And it, it it makes you feel more like Master Chief, like a Spartan, whenever you're fighting, because you are just this harbinger of death and you're just, you know, killing these grunts, taking out these brutes, taking out these elites and uh, I just, yeah. It, Johnny, how fun was last night? It was so fun. Yeah, Bobby and I uh, played some multiplayer together last night. I had a really oh, good time. Okay. Um, like, you guys have a good time. It's night? just, yeah, it's just fun. Halo is fun again, and I think by this time after Halo Five came out, I had already stopped playing the multiplayer. I think I played it for like a month. Uh, I think I maybe put. 15 to 20 hours into it and i've already put almost 70 hours into the infinite multiplayer um so i i think that <laughs> it's a good game all right and I, I didn't want to say that i really didn't want to say that because i had a terrible t- I, the, like one of the worst if not the worst experiences trying to play a game with this game yeah <laughs> and i i went back and forth on it i'm like you know fuck it just be done with it because you want to fuck be, off fuck off <laughs> But I was able to get it working, and it really has been, uh, well, up until yesterday when I made a really poor decision, the only game that I've been playing. Um, more to come on that next week. But I, um, I think that if this game would have, one, functioned the way it was intended to for me, and two, had co-op at launch, it probably would have been much higher. It would have been on my list. Yeah. It, would, it would have been pretty high on my list, yeah. actually. Yeah, and there there are some things that are missing. There's some issues with the battle pass, the the multiplayer list. They have addressed mo- a, a lot of those issues. Uh, it's easier to level up the battle pass. They have added like SWAT and free for all and Fiesta and regular Team Slayer, uh, so you can play those. You don't have to get into a hopper that has those and objective modes. So it's been out for a little over a month now. The multiplayer, and they've already made pretty significant improvements to it. Um, and you know, once co-op, once Forge is in there, I'm going to like it even more than I do now. So, um, yeah, that is Halo Infinite it is my favorite game I played this year. I bet I would enjoy it if I got to play it. Um, I, and I think, I think Halo is, act, is getting a bit of the brunt that I should, I, sh- it should be reserving for Xbox in general, just not liking that system. But I, I think I'd probably like it. Well, I, I did not like four or five, but mm-hmm. I think I'd probably. I think, I think that you we would. should all play through that campaign when we can, and hopefully by that sure. point in time, we'll we'll have all have devices that will allow us to do that the right way. And I think that yep. that will just probably be- all have Game Pass at that point. We'll yeah. see. I think that would be yep. a, a fucking blast. I can't wait. Yeah. Um, could, could be a casual hour stream in 2022. Who knows? Who knows? Chase, did you happen? You guys to- ready to do some math? Let's do some math, yeah, here, man. I, I really want to know how this, I, this got. I mean, I, I've already, I've already done the math. Oh, okay. Oh, you, can you yeah. copy and paste it over uh, here to the document by chance? No. Okay. No, I cannot. Is it on our note? We can do that. We can do that later. No, no, no. I've just been doing. Okay. It. We, we, I can, I can do that in a bit, but I'd, I'd rather announce it first and then you see it. 
Um, I can, Bobby, scroll down a little bit. I'll start writing it out. Okay. okay. Uh, no, uh, so let's see. What do, you, what do you want here? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I, I'd say there are eight games here that are worth talking about. Um, Forza Horizon got 10 points. Uh, Monster, or no, no, Monster. Uh, Halo Infinite got 10 points from Johnny's number one pick there. Uh, Loop Hero ended up with 11 points. We have a tie for third, so I think there might need to be a discussion on what actually our third best game of the year is. Uh, A tie between Unpacking and Deathloop both had 14 points. Inscription got 17 points, and then, uh, you know, with with a bullet, 28 points for for fights and tight spaces. Okay. Um, You know, 28 comes with two tens for, for two first place finishes and then another eight points for Johnny. So that's how those numbers well, well, can we work ask, out. Can I ask you a quick question? So yeah. is there anything outside of besides the tie that you feel we should have a discussion on to change placement at this point in time? I mean, I don't think we need to tip the scales any more than we already have for fights and tight spaces. I think that is that's easily our, game of the year. I think yeah. We all felt really strongly about that. It was one that we all had on all of our lists and had high, if not number one, for two of us. So I don't see any reason that's not our number one. Okay. Um, the number one? I know Johnny doesn't have Inscription on his list. Uh, I think Inscription is really cool. It, it was high on, on Bobby's list and my list. So yeah. I, I think two it's... free for us. Yeah, right? maybe... I, I, yeah. Uh, so, you know, I, I think it, you know, is somewhat at least deservedly gets its second place thing. I could hear an argument for it, but I think that third place there is is the one I question. And I do have uh, so, another wait, thought as well. What's is that? Inscription our number two? I mean, that's the way the math works out. Okay. Yeah. I'm fine uh, with that. I, I, I'm fine with that too. It, it can be our number two. Okay. Uh, the question I have, so we have, we have Unpacking and Deathloop both at 14 points. L- let me throw a thought here and just see how it lands uh bobby you had forza horizon 5 as your number 10 johnny you had it as what your number three number two number two uh i did not have that on my list at all because i didn't play it but i know i would like that game i know if i played it it probably would have ended up being you know uh you know at least a top five You're, you would i could totally point see to raise it for i know i know where this is going yeah I, I yeah agree. Like it, it, that, that math would have happened. Like I, I respect. I, I told you guys weeks ago that whatever you guys wanted to say about Forza Horizon Five, I support because yeah. I know I would love that game. And the only thing keeping me from it is me not wanting to play on an Xbox. And once I get a Steam Deck, that's not going to be a problem. So, so I could totally really understand that being a third place. Like it's a three-way then between Forza, Deathloop, Unpacking, and Unpacking. Just, does that shift anything? I mean. Down? Uh, I mean, it would shift Loop Hero down, but and and Halo Infinite, I guess, is tied with ten for Forza Horizon right now. But Johnny, what are your thoughts there? Here, I'll just I'll copy all that stuff we into can... the Google Doc so you can so you can see it there. I mean, Chase okay. didn't he didn't nominate it at all, but like I, there's games that you didn't play that, that you nominated. So like for me, it's one of those things where it's I mean, you didn't play you were part of large right like i had experiences with those games yeah Yeah. but just i didn't really have an experience with forza horizon 5 outside of the quick look and watching you guys that i mean i know unpacking is my number three game of the year like that that is the one i would fight for but i totally understand that johnny really likes forza horizon 5 i know i would really like forza horizon 5 and you liked it enough to put it on your top 10 which i think speaks Pretty big volumes for you. Yeah. I also know that you two both like Deathloop. You talked about yeah. Deathloop a lot, so I could I could totally respect seeing well, that Johnny being the was number what, three. six for him. And Deathloop yeah. was two for me. I I think that. I mean, I'm and it, you would obviously put Forza on a list. I don't think I don't know if you'd put Deathloop at all. I could get behind this. I just want to make sure Johnny's okay with it because it's obviously going to shift a few things. I don't want this to fuck over unpacking too much, but let me know. I, mean, I, I think it's I think it's a worthy discussion here. Like, I, I'm fine with that. 
I, I'd feel a little bad if we gave unpacking our number three spot because then I, I feel like Johnny doesn't have a ton of representation on this. Let's do I, I know I would I know I would have liked that game, but yeah. okay. Uh, yeah, I'm fine with having Forza Horizon three as our as our number three. That that makes sense to me. Horizon five, is and three. then so yes. What did, okay. I, did I say the other way? Said yes. Three. Three. All right. So <laughs> uh, what does that do five. for four here? I, I don't think the rest matters. We 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 have a top three. Like that's Let's that's do, what well, we have. We have to do a top ten. You you want to do a full? You want to do a full top ten? We always do. And we always do we. Yeah. Have we always done that? Yeah. Okay, I'm fine doing it. Like yeah. we've got time. Yeah. The podcast is weirdly short this week, uh, this this night. Um, then yeah, I, I'd probably fight for unpacking over Deathloop. Um, I'm fine with unpacking being in fourth. I think that okay. game sounds incredibly moving. Okay, uh, Deathloop. I think I'm I'm obviously on a bit of an island with Deathloop. Um, but yeah, that's fine by me. It's a good fight. I'm not. I'm not going to be too strict after seeing what our number one is. Yeah, yeah. I think we we've, we've already figured out what we need to figure out. Um, and and then I don't mind the way the math is shaking out here at this point. Like Loop Hero, I think can be six. Halo Infinite, I think can be number seven. Uh, well, after that, Death Loop five. Halo. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. 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 You're good. Yeah. Uh, here, I'll copy in the the rest of. I'll just copy in the rest of the stuff. So you can you can see how these numbers are numbers playing. Okay. Uh, so ne- next up by the math would be Monster Hunter Stories Two, which yeah. I mean it was on it was on all of our lists. I think yeah. it probably deserves to be in the top ten somewhere, um, and it is better than Monster Hunter Rise. Uh, and I, I would love to have Monster Hunter Rise right underneath. Monster Hunter Stories 2, the superior Monster Hunter game that came out this year. I think that just makes sense. False. But yeah. okay. And then and how Tome? many? And then Tome is our 10. I, I'm pretty happy with that. Unless, unless Johnny, you want to make an argument why Hitman 3 is better than, than, uh, than Tome. Or I, I, Bobby, I, if you think anything else down there no. deserves to be above Tome. I, honestly, Johnny, I think you would adore Tome. I, I have no qualms with this. Okay. Yeah, we're good with this list. This is this is a list of good video games. This is a. I want to say this is a chase ass list this year. I'm pretty. I'm pretty psyched. I told you early on this year, and you kept you kept downplaying it, but I told you, I think you're going to be pretty happy this year. And also, I think that this is a pretty damn. When I think about the casual hour. When I think about our list, I think this is a really good representation of us as a show. I think that this covers agree. this covers so much of what we do. This covers so much of our personalities. Like we're not only playing one genre of game. We're never gonna be that show. We're not gonna be like maybe Pokemon. Like I could see us being like a Pokemon show. But yeah. at the end of the day But also a po- a Pokemon game two Pokemon games came out this year. Three if you count Shining Pearl and Brilliant Diamond is two different games, uh, and none of them made any of our lists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go figure. This is a cool list. Um, so let's just read it out there for people who are listening. Uh, number ten is Toem. Number nine, Monster Hunter Rise. Number eight, Monster Hunter Stories Two. Number seven, Halo Infinite. Number six, Loop Hero. Number five, Death Loop. Number four, Unpacking. Number three, Horizon, uh, Forza Horizon 5. Number two, Inscription. And our number one game of the year at the Casual Hour for 2021 was Fights in Tight Spaces. And uh, yeah. I, I'm... Good list. That's a good list. It's a really good list. It's been for a year that had a lot of things that took the wind out of my sails from not coming out to being... Um, delayed, forgotten, whatever you want to say. I I think that this ended up being a year that has created a pretty big change in me as a gamer. And when we set out to do the podcast all those years ago, it was about learning about new games, recommending new games, and talking about games that matter to us. And I think that this is the year that that 
that happened. I want to again thank you two for trusting me enough to try something new that I know that you both were uncomfortable with. Um, I know that streaming was something that like not even I was quite sure about, but like the more that we were separated with COVID, the more it became important for for us to find ways to to see each other more and to check in on each other more and to check in on other people. And I think that in a weird twist of fate, it's opened up the door for a lot of other things for us too. And I'm, I'm very happy that you all went on this journey into streaming and playing like playing. I know that you got lives outside of this and this is just me saying thank you to the two dudes on the show. So deal with it. But you both got a lot of shit that happens outside of our show. This isn't our only job. Like this isn't even a job. This is just something we do for fun. And the fact that you've all made time for quick looks for Mondays and Fridays, and of course our Wednesday recording, like it means the world to me. And it's, it's gotten me personally through a lot of shit. So I just want to say thank you for, for doing it. And I know I can be overbearing and a weirdo when it comes to this stuff, but thank you for, for doing it. It means a lot. You know what? And I can be weird and arbitrary and Johnny can be Johnny, Johnny. Weird. <laughs> Uh, you know, I think technically that counts as a be nice to Johnny. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Almost. Yeah. You missed out. You I get that one. You get that one for free. You get that, you one, get for that free. one for free. Hey, let's let's play a little game here. I've just pulled up our casual our game of the year 2020 list. And I oh. went to uh, our top five games of 2021. We did top fives. That's fun. Maybe we should have done that this year. Anyway, let's read off and just see how let's see how things worked out. Uh, Bobby, you thought your number one game this year was going to be Breath of the Wild 2. <laughs> your number two was Horizon Forbidden West? Nope. Uh, number three, God of War Ragnarok? Nope. <laughs> number four, Temtem? Not quite out yet. And number five, Ooblets? Also not quite out yet? That one's not quite finished, right? No, Still no, none access. of those games I picked are out yet. Yeah, but none of those games are out. Hey, you know what? Maybe Johnny did better. Why don't we check on Johnny's? Johnny's so. number one, Breath of the Wild 2. Number two, God of War Ragnarok. Number three, Horizon Forbidden West. Yeesh. Yikes. Uh, number four was Hitman 3. Hey, there you go. That's that's in there. Uh, number five, Persona 5 Strikers. How'd Oof. that one work out for you, Johnny? Wow. Not well. Yikes. Uh, and then uh, me, I get my own comeuppance. Uh, my number one was Psychonauts 2. I'm pissed at you, Johnny. I wanted to call it my most disappointing game of this year. And you're like, no, man, it's a good game. It's a good game. It didn't even make your top 10. You didn't give a shit about Psychonauts 2. You should have let me. That's you should have let me make that most disappointing game. That's true. Damn you, Johnny. You Johnnyed me again. I really like Psychonauts 2. Not enough to put yeah. it in your top 10. Not enough to keep Chase from not liking it. Shit piss off uh my number two is monster hunter stories 2 pretty happy with that my number three was sable damn i i wanted to play sable uh my number four was digimon survive a game that is not out yet and probably i don't know when that game's gonna come out uh and then my number five was the super robot wars 30th anniversary game which ended up being super robot wars 30 uh, which i want to play and cannot wait to play as soon as DLC 2 comes out again in a matter of days and I will be playing the shit out of that game as soon as it does. Oh yeah. I thought that's fun. Fun to fun to look back at that and uh and see yeah, how long uh, we were. Well, yeah, I feel like we can do that most years though. Uh we're wrong a lot. Move us over here to credits and we'll, we will say our goodbyes as we have already started that process here. Um this has been a very fun-filled year for us at the Casual Hour. Uh, we've got a lot of things to look forward to. We've got a lot of quick looks that will be coming out on Tuesdays and Thursdays for the next few weeks. Um, next week, we will not have a lot, um, I don't believe. I think we'll have a Monday night stream. Uh, we will have a Wednesday night podcast, right? Is that true? Is that a true statement? Or are you going to be gone? If, if, if you do, I won't be here. Okay. We will not have a Wednesday night podcast. So I think the only thing that we've got live next week is going to be Monday night. Um, and I'm going to call it right now. Chase and I will be playing a victory lap with Fights and Tight Spaces to take a look at the holiday attire that they have um, to get in the fest 
activities for that game, but we will have quick looks that go up. With that, we just wanna say, um, for all of you out there, happy holidays. Hope you have a, a, a good one. Uh, you've had Hanukkah, happy Hanukkah, whatever you celebrate or don't celebrate, we hope that you're well, and with people that you care about. Um, so we're gonna take some time off next week and come back and tell you all about those games come out in January. But uh, check out some of our past streams over on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash casual hour. You can also check out Chase K's plays, which he has an awesome YouTube channel. Also, him and Johnny are doing a, a really cool run right now for Pokemon, which is a Nuzlocke. Board. Tomorrow, tomorrow noon, new tomorrow episode, episode three of noon. Chase and Johnny's excellent Pokemon Nuzlocke adventure. Yeah. And if you want it's a little bit more one. of an in one of our moments of the year yeah. showed up tomorrow in that, in that episode. Check it out. Uh, and if you're looking for things, if you're missing us live, Go back, check out Game of the Year Part 1, which is our categories, and, and 2. There's a lot of great discussion there. A lot of video game podcasting. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to try and get this edited and up tomorrow. Probably won't happen. Uh, you might see this episode go live on Monday. Who knows? Uh, but just want to say thanks to you two again, and thanks to everybody who tuned in to make this happen this year. Uh, we've really enjoyed playing games with you all, and we've got even more plans and excitement for 2022. So... Uh, make, make yourself at home, stay a while, play something new, and we will be back to hang out with all of you in a couple weeks. So be safe, take care. See ya.